This is shuttle launch control. We have now joined history's largest crew of astronauts in the operations and checkout building as they wait for their breakfast. The seven-person crew is the largest ever to be launched in this space by any nation, and in fact is as large as the entire Mercury uh, program astronaut corps was 21 years ago. At the head table in the center is Mission Commander Bob Crippen, and uh, the other members are displayed about him on either side. To uh, Bob Crippen's immediate left is Sally Ride on her second trip into space. Bob Crippen, of course, has completed uh, three trips. This will be his fourth, fourth mission in space. Seated to Commander Crippen's right is Kathy Sullivan. She's a space rookie, of course, on her first mission. And to her right is Canadian Mark Garneau. And we'll, uh, we'll be panning around a table here to see the other crew members as well. Uh, this is John McBride and uh, Paul Scully Power, noticeable for his beard. He's the payload specialist. And uh, John McBride is the pilot on this particular flight. At the opposite end of the table was Mission Specialist 3, David Liesma. And we understand that the crew is, uh, at this point, beginning to make their way out of the crew quarters. And we see Commander Bob Crippen and Sally Ride leaving the crew quarters. Followed by uh, Kathy Sullivan. And Mark Garneau of Canada, distinctive with a maple leaf flag on his flight suit. Paul Scully Power with the beard, and also followed by George Eddy, several of the support team astronauts and security personnel, all climbing into the elevator to go down to the ground floor. Crew now leaving the operations and checkout building, uh, led by the two women on this flight, Kathy Sullivan and Sally Ride. Commander Crippen and all the other crew members for history's largest astronaut crew, climbing into the Astro Van, which is a modified camper-style vehicle. Incidentally, that camper vehicle was purchased by NASA because of the increasing size of shuttle flight crews. Uh, the former vehicles were proving just too small to, uh, to carry all the people for the nine-mile trip out to the flight pad, the launch pad. Crews being sent off by a crowd of media representatives and employees, which traditionally gather at the walkway, leaving the operations and checkout building. And the Astro van will move off in just a few seconds for the nine-mile trip out to launch pad 39A. Bob Crippen now donning his helmet. He'd already put on his, uh, his vest. This procedure, of course, is very familiar to Bob Crippen. He's had uh, three launches already in space and numerous tests where he's donned this equipment. Commander Crippen, is, at 47 years of age, is the old man of this particular mission. He was born in Beaumont, Texas, and he joined the Astronaut Corps in 1969. He was selected to be the pilot of the first space shuttle mission with John Young and has since flown two other space missions for a total of three. This makes him NASA's most experienced shuttle astronaut. He's one of the five members of this mission with naval backgrounds. Commander Crippen is listed as a Navy captain. He was a naval attack pilot aboard the carrier USS Independence for more than two years before joining NASA. Mission Specialist 1, Kathy Sullivan, now boarding, boarding Challenger's cockpit. And Dr. Sally Ride is now entering Orbiter Challenger for her second flight into space. A technician wiping down the soles of her shoes to make sure that no excess dirt would be tracked into the Orbiter Columbia uh, Challenger, rather. And the ATDMS2, check. Yeah, MS2, you're coming in loud and clear. I'll be. Okay, you're coming in loud and clear, too. About to enter Challenger's cockpit now is Canadian Mark Garneau who is the first Canadian selected to fly in space aboard a space shuttle. 
Garneau is also a PhD with a specialty in electrical engineering. He's an employee of the Canadian Navy and is along on this mission to perform primarily 10 experiments in three different scientific fields for Canada. He's one of six Canadian astronauts selected earlier this year for training and eventual flight. And now entering Challenger's cockpit is Paul Scully Power. Uh, Scully Power is, most, is the most recent addition to this crew list. He's a civilian employee of, of the U.S. Navy, and he has considerable experience and time performing oceanographic research as a senior scientist or chief scientist on 24 research cruises. He was born and educated in Australia and has since become a United States citizen. He will be conducting a wide range of oceanographic studies for the Navy during the flight. T minus 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, go for main engine start, 7, 6, we have main engine start, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, we have SRB ignition and the history's largest astronaut crew is on its way. Houston controlling now, all main engines running at 100%. Roll program initiated, 120 degree roll maneuver to uh, put the uh, ship on its 57 degree inclination with the uh, crew heads down and wings level. Throttling down to 92%. Main engine's running smoothly, throttling down now to 65%. Challenger going through the period of uh, max Q of uh, maximum dynamic pressure on the ship. Engine performance still stable. APU is all uh, running smoothly. Velocity. Challenger Houston, go and throttle up. All main engines back at 100% of thrust. Uh, velocity 2,000, 3,000 feet per second now. Altitude 11 miles, distance downrange 8 miles. Challenger climbing at the rate of 1,800 feet per second. Engine performance still looks good. All engines are running at 100% of rated thrust. APU performance is nominal. Altitude 4,200 feet. Altitude 18 miles, 19 miles. Velocity 4,800 feet per second. Distance downrange 20 nautical miles. That call precursor to SRB separation, which should come momentarily. And now I'm going to separate. Your separation. All three engines still running. Challenger Houston, first stage performance nominal. Roger, nominal first stage.
Challenger Houston, you're go for command pass to RF and your PI setup. Okay, we copy, go for command pass to RF and PI setup. And that'll be in work in just a second. Roger. Okay, and uh, everybody's up here having fun. You can uh, play with the flight deck here for a while, and we also have the uh, have the mid deck or correction the uh, payload bay uh, cameras on if uh, if you want to play with those. But uh, you really can fit seven people in here. Looks a bit crowded though. Not very much. And we have a nice picture of the herb. Okay. Okay, uh, Houston Challenger, we're all squared away and ready for SEP whenever you guys are. Roger, Crip, uh, we'll be with you momentarily. Challenger, Houston, you're go for release. Okay, we'll put it in work. Okay, Sally's back in the arm off of the pin at this time, and we'll stand, stand by.
the, uh, the interleaf deploying. Roger that. Got a good picture of that. And once that leaf started deploying, the oscillations uh, pretty much stopped. And by the time it was out, uh, it was nice and stable. Yes, that movement looks surprisingly smooth for a structure like that. Challenger Houston with you through Hawaii for eight and a half minutes. Okay, as you can see, uh, we got uh, Mark and Paul right now are running through a little of uh, uh, the Canadian uh, experiments uh, dealing with the space adaptation syndrome. And uh, Sally and Dave are going through some of our radiation monitor equipment at this time. We got a read coming up. We have a teleprinter message coming up at this time. Roger that. And uh, we'd like for you to leave the TV control and panel. I'm sorry, uh, but I had them in panel. They're back in command. You can have it. Copy that. Okay, we're getting more and more individuals into the into the picture now. That's that's, that's a great shot. Got lots of folks aboard. Okay, we're watching. See the orange spots? That's a good close-up, thanks. I'm not sure what you're getting in color on that. Uh, what color does that dark strip look to you? Looks pretty black. Oh, that's what it looks like here.
Okay, there's the other one we're speaking of. Okay, Crip, uh, we're going LOS and we won't be talking to you until Vandenberg at 9 plus 3 zero. We'd like you to dump tank A down to 70% and Bravo down to 20%. That should be about 30 minutes. Okay, A to 70 and Bravo to 20 and uh, we go to do that when? Anytime at your convenience. Okay. Challenger, Houston with you through Tedris. How do you read? Okay, we read you loud and clear. How is Ron? We read you loud and clear. Go ahead, USIA commentator. Uh, uh, this is Houston Press Center again. Uh, do you read us, uh, USIA studio? Okay, uh, this is the Houston Press Center uh, Challenger. Uh, uh, we're ready for questions now from Houston. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, we're standing by. Make that tough luck, Mark. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, we're ready now for questions from Houston. Uh, if I don't identify you, by name and affiliation, please do so. Paul Reeser, Associated Press. <clears throat> Based on the uh, television views that we've seen of uh, you people in your in your uh, space cabin, you look you resemble sometimes a can of anchovies. I'm wondering uh, for Bob Crippen, when you return, uh, are you going to really recommend that uh, uh, seven crew members again are flown aboard the space shuttle? That's a very tough question and one that I uh, considered a lot prior uh, to taking uh, this mission. I guess the result is that I have found that if people are properly disciplined and uh, at least with the kinds of tasks that we have, that uh, that we can operate seven people in the shuttle. Martin Dean, uh, CBS. Uh, to Bob Crippen, Bob, how difficult or discouraging has it been for you to deal with a mission that has had so many troubles, problems? Which mission was that, Morton? <laughs> My follow-up is this uh, mission. <laughs> okay, Morton. Uh, yeah, we've had some problems. I think uh, they've probably been more of, uh, tough for the ground to deal with. The uh, the problem we ran into with the KU band antenna, I know, has certainly given the Sir B folks some, some problems trying to get all their data. I believe that 
Mission Control in Houston has done its marvelous job that it normally does in coming up with workarounds that allow us to uh, think that's uh, been the general tenor of the way we do business, that uh, if things don't work out, we'll, we'll make the best of what we have. I believe we're getting good data for them. We had a little problem with our fest. I think that we've got that under control now. And uh, as far as we're concerned, uh, things are running along fairly smoothly. Okay, uh, Rebecca Chase, ABC. This is for uh, Commander Crippen and uh, Sally Ride. Could you compare the, uh, this, uh, this mission with the other missions that you've been on, uh, comparing the problems and the, uh, the crowded conditions and the heat, as well as the accomplishments of uh, what you think you're doing up there? Uh, well, the last mission that uh, that I was on with Crip was, was a great mission, and we really didn't have many problems, and uh, we had a great time the whole time we were up there. This mission, I guess any space flight is a great space flight, and we're having, we're having an awful lot of fun. We've had a few more problems, um, but so far we've been pretty successful in all the things that, that we've been trying to do. We got the Earth spacecraft deployed on flight day one although that was a little bit of a struggle, but uh, just made us all the more happy when we when we got it out there. And I think that uh, the crowded conditions, it's, it's more crowded with seven people than it was with five, but uh, everybody's been pretty good about trying to stay out of everybody else's way, and it's, it's really working pretty well. And as far as the heat goes, we're all from Houston, so it's nothing that we're not used to. Mark, thanks from uh, CTV. This one is for uh, Mark Garneau. Mark, you're rather busy up there, eight hours a day you're spent conducting experiments and uh, another eight hours if you're lucky you're sleeping. Are you getting much time just to gaze out the window and uh, wonder at the uh, splendor of it all? Yeah, actually I'm getting all the time I can. In fact, uh, every time we go over Canada, I'm generally uh, stuck at the window having a look out there. I haven't been able to see it all because of some cloud, but uh, Certainly, I'm getting my share of the time at the window, and it's absolutely fantastic. This, this is Houston Press Center. Do you copy, Chuck? Hang up and try it again. If you need help, hang up and then dial your operator. <laughs> This is uh, Houston Press Center. Do you copy, Challenger? Uh, Challenger? Yes, sir. We copy loud and clear. Water pressure 15.5, water pressure. 
Cat.
And uh, Houston Challenger, how do you read, Dick? Challenger, Houston, you're loud and clear, Crip. Okay, you read you the same. Order Challenger now approaching the Kentucky Tennessee line. First roll reversal beginning uh, right here over Knoxville, Tennessee at an altitude of 174,177 feet. Mach 11.35. Standing by for mile acquisition. Challenger, Houston back with you through Mila. Configure AOS. Okay, you're still configured. Mission Control, Houston, velocity now 10,555 feet per second. Altitude 161,000 feet. Sink rate uh, 522 feet per second. Range 370 nautical miles. Velocity now 9,830 feet per second. Altitude 150,000 feet. Approaching the second roll of reversal as they uh, approach the Florida state line. Altitude 133,000 feet, velocity 6,300 feet per second. Sink rate 256 feet per second. Mission Control Houston, the uh, CAVE has acquired the orbiter on their infrared cameras. Long range opticals now uh, show a dot of light, which will uh, gradually increase to the shape of a uh, space shuttle orbiter named Challenger, now at a velocity of 4,200 feet per second, altitude 104,000 feet, 109 nautical miles from the runway. Mission Control, Houston, uh, 75,000 feet, 46 nautical miles to touchdown, velocity now 1,800 feet per second, sink rate 226 feet per second. Altitude now 73,000 feet. We're seeing long-range opticals from Cocoa Beach, uh, Patrick Air Force Base. Columbia or Challenger right on her ground track. Flossing now 1,500 feet per second. Challenger descending at 200 feet per second. Altitude 34,000 feet. And the Houston Challenger will suddenly opening landing gear iPhone right number one. We copy. Sonic boom has been heard at the Kennedy Space Center. Challenger now uh, turning left overhead, 190 degrees onto the hack. 29,000 feet. 15 nautical miles. Velocity 730 feet per second. Altitude 27,000 feet. Range 13 nautical miles. Equivalent airspeed 270 knots. Altitude 22,000 feet now. Sink rate 223 feet per second. Angle of attack about 4.5 degrees. Velocity 494 feet per second. Altitude 1100 feet, 800 feet. Range 1.3 nautical miles. Gear down. Nose down.
Mission Control, Houston, in eight days, five hours, 24 minutes. The largest crew in the history of space flight is home. Houston, uh, we copy that crib and you outfoxed us again. You landed at KSC, but the beer has been sent to Edwards. I don't believe it. Don't believe it. Power. 